Hello everyone, this is Brian of Space Game Junkie. How y'all doing? Uh, you can't answer me. <laughs> but uh, hello, welcome to my first series of Let's Play review videos covering the 1993 amazing capital ship space sim Rules of Engagement 2 by Impressions and Omnitrend. Uh, before I go any further, let me just apologize. My voice... <coughs> My throat's feeling a little scratchy. I've been drinking water and everything, and I have some here right next to me. But that's okay. I uh, just wanted to let you guys know if I sound a little scratchy. That's uh, my voice is scratchy, and I apologize. So, we are looking at Rules of Engagement 2. This is the second game in the Rules of Engagement series, obviously with the two. But it's the seventh game in the Omnitrend Universe series of games. They all take place in the same universe. You got your three universe games that came out in the 80s. You have your three Breach games, uh, which are tactical. If you don't know what Breach is, uh, they're tactical, uh, top-down, turn-based um, combat games, uh, which are they're kind of like early Jagged Alliance type thing. And they actually work with uh, the Rules of Engaging game in certain scenarios the two can link together, so if you board a ship, <coughs> excuse me, if you board a ship, it'll link over to uh, Breach, and you could use the Breach engine to actually command your fleet commander, your squad commander, and the troops individually, rather than just watching a little screen with a couple of indicators showing you how your Marines are doing. Uh, so that's pretty cool, but we're not going to do that, uh, because this is about space. Uh, and the universe games, uh, I haven't played those yet, but apparently they're more kind of elite-ish, spacey, role-playing-y, trade-y gamies. So, this is about capital, starship, combat, and fleet command. And while Rules of Engagement 1 was very good, Rules of Engagement 2 improves upon it in almost every way. So, let's uh, take you through a little bit of this, uh, just to show you where we're coming from. I'm going to show you the configure screen. And I apologize for how slow this runs. I have DOSBox going at 3,000 cycles. And uh, if you speed it up too much further, the game starts to really get... Uh, excuse me. The game really starts to get unstable. So I'm just keeping it there. So as you can see, I've turned... That's the thing I was talking about with Breach, this IGS. I've turned that off. I've turned the normal skill level on because I'm not a wussy. I've done this before. And I turned the... Uh, I forget who recommended this, but thank you for recommending I turn the sound and volume. Not that there are a lot of sounds and volumes with this particular game, but I was recommended to turn those down while I was playing. So that's a good idea. Uh, I could probably leave the rest of this on. So, uh, there's a couple differences between Recruit, Normal, and Vet, just to rely that out. Like, Recruit, for example, your shields go up immediately upon being fired upon, uh, whereas Normal and Vet, they do not. If you hit the pause button, this is a real-time game, if you hit the pause button on recruit level, you can still see your screens, while on normal invet, you cannot. Those are just some of the, those are the kind of the big differences. So let's get out of here. Now, to show you the f this first, uh, <laughs> this first thing, this first entry, is going to take you, I'm going to take you a little bit through the controls, just to show you how detailed they are, detailed they are. <coughs> and... I'm going to take us through the first mission of an actual campaign. Now, I made a little test campaign of one mission just to, just so we can see how the controls work without worrying about being fired upon or any of that fun stuff. So, we're going to assume command. Yes, we're going to assume command of our fleet. Now, as you can see, I've created myself, Lieutenant Commander Brian Rubin. I always do that in games. Just adds to the um, the immersion for me. So the campaign is Happy Fun Times. That's the campaign I created. This is the tutorial campaign right here. I already went through that because I wanted to refamiliarize myself with how the game worked before I, I ran this. So I've already gone through that. So there's no uh, there's really no need to show you that. But I just want to show you uh, just some simple stuff. So you have to make a game and then you have to name it. And you can't click here. No, you got to click here. And then... Uh, I have an old... IBM Model M keyboard, so it's loud, so that's what you're going to hear. So, you select your commander, you select your game, 
at your campaign, which has various difficulties. Then you select, then you make a campaign f for yourself, a campaign game, and then you play. So let's dive in, shall we? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I wrote that. This game comes with a full campaign and mission editor, both of them. So you can have branching campaigns based on whether you lo win or lose a mission. It's pretty cool. The game actually comes with three manuals, and one of them... Oh god, thank you. One of them is actually a ma manual solely for the builder. I, I kind of miss that. I kind of miss those days where, um, where games came with beefy manuals, and this game definitely has one of my favorites. Now, as you can see, we have two ships. Uh, and we could take a look at each of them. So first we have the Axia. Let's take a look at that. That's a cruiser. And you can see she's got uh, different command and control systems, drives. And each of these comes from different companies. And a cool thing is, I'll show you a little later, each of these companies has like a different logo and a different description. They put a lot of work into the detail of this game. And it really just feels like a really fleshed out universe. So that's the cruiser. And then we have the Dongara, which I believe is a destroyer. Yes, the Dongara is a destroyer. And so you can see that it's got the, the various stats right here, giving you a total uh, command point total. And each waypoint that you deploy to has a limit, uh, which you'll see in a second. So first we have to assign each ship to a captain. So... We have to do that. So I'm going to take, my ca my character is going to take the Axia. I'm going to assign them down there. Now, one of the great things about this game is that each captain, and you can create captains in the editor as well, each captain has their own uh, personality, their own psych profile. And you could look at that in the dossier, and it'll tell you how loyal they are, their background, uh, son of a famed ambassador, as you can see here, promotion. Oh, he's failed to perceive potential, considerable fatigue, growing delusion with the war. Yeah, I don't think we're going to use him. We need we need something. We need someone who's sharp, who who's on board. So let's take a look at Akiri Mustafa. Uh, join the 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 FWAF. That's F W A F. That's uh, Federated World's Armed Forces. And there's a whole history behind that. I'll get to in a minute. Uh, involved several successful negotiations, executive officer to the Lion Campaign, uh, first officer was killed, uh, oh, quick thinking, and escaped to fight another day. I like that. Let's just look at one more. Let's keep uh, Akira in, Akiri, excuse me, in mind. Let's take a look at Cynthia. Let's take a look at Cynthia Gibbs here. I wonder if they're, no, I can't be related to the Gibbs, Gibb brothers. Uh, wrecking of it in the middle of her c oh, acceptable manner. S several decorated commendations. No strengths and weaknesses. Moderately experienced and a capable commander. Okay, yeah, I want someone who can think quickly on their feet. So I'm going to assign uh, Akiri here to the Dangara. Now, uh, the next thing we have to do before we can deploy is deploy our ships to the waypoint. So we have one waypoint, or we have two waypoints. We're going to deploy uh, our ships to waypoint one. Now, as you can see, total RP is allowed. That is the number I was showing you earlier. Each ship has a certain amount of resource points it takes up. And so you can only deploy a certain amount of ships at a certain waypoint. So as you can see, I add the Axia, the number goes down, and then I add the Dungara, and the number goes down again. So, okay, we're going to add those there. And, as you can see, this system has several asteroid belts. This T-03 right here and T-01, those are outposts, uh, for example. So, yeah, it's a fairly, you know, busy system. So now that we've selected our captains, and we've selected our waypoints and the ships to go to those waypoints, we are going to deploy our ships. Yes, I'm ready to deploy the fleet. Let's go. I want to blow some stuff up. Now, I only put a couple of destroyers, I mean, not destroyers, transports, 
uh, of the enemy, the UDP, the United Democratic Planets. Red alert. Oh, oh, already. So this is our main uh, bar here. This tells us the status of our current ship, such as shields, lasers, weapon systems, engines, she all that fun stuff. That's our crew. That's our chronometer right here. See, so we have a pause thingy. And these are our four quad panels. Now, each quad panel can do just about anything. As you can see, we have navigation. We have communications. Tactical. Data. Docking and repair, which we're probably not going to need. Emergency systems. Uh, save and exit. I don't know why it's telling us save mission. And we can actually save these for later. So first, we are going to get an idea of what's going on. So we're going to look at the nav map. Oh, there's a ship right there. Okay. So hang on. I'm going to change the panel two and load the communication transmit screen. Then I'm going to load panel three and select the communications receive screen. Now, we are going to select one of our other ships, the Dongora, and we are going to tell him yeah, the Dongora. We are going to give him an order, and there are a lot of orders you can give. There are like 40 some orders you can give to a ship. So we're going to tell him to form with the flagship. Oh, hang on. I need to you got I want to put this button. That's the acknowledge button on. I want them to acknowledge the order, and sometimes they won't acknowledge the order. Sometimes captains are like, screw you, I don't want to acknowledge your order, whatever. So, and some commanders will actually acknowledge your order whether you have that button on or not. So we're going to tell him to form with the flagship, and now we have positioned information we just got. That's, yeah, that's the captain. I don't know if you heard my cat a second ago, I apologize for that. Um, that's Murphy, so that's, that's my cat. So, one of my cats. So now that we have... Uh, had our ship form with the flagship, we are going to switch things up a bit. So we are going to attack. Yeah, we are going to attack. So this is tactical fire control right here. And this is uh, tactical maneuvering. And we're just going to leave the calm thing in panel two right there. And then we're going to put in panel four our defense. So as you can see, we can put just about any panel in any configuration. Now since there's another ship out there, it's a transport, but it's armed, and it's been ordered to not let us destroy it, I'm going to put up our shields. Now, when you want to maneuver uh, toward a certain ship, first you have to lock onto it. So we have our enemy type selected, and if I, I hope I'm not going too fast for y'all, but we ha can select different types of ships to target. But we have enemy selected. So we're going to lock on to the one transport in our sensor range. Now, there might be other transports out there. But they might be out of our ship's sensor range, so we can't see them. So as you can see, this transport is about 6 million kilometers away. Oh, and it's closing on us. <laughs> Hell. So we want to close the gap. So if we want to shadow it on its backside, you select 180 degrees and you hit the shadow command and that tells the autopilot to get behind the ship and stay there to the best of its ability there are other commands such as position which tells you to take us to t which tells you your ship to take a certain position relative to the top of the map rather than the ship there's escape which is basically get the hell out of there as quickly as you can and evade halt and navigation, which tells the autopilot to resume its course before you're told to do stuff. Oh, I'm being fired upon. So we got to do something about that. So first, let's turn the power. Oh, boy. Let's turn the power of our missile, of our beam weapons to about 70% so we can fire more often. And we're going to select uh, our wooden Nova. It's a very, no, I don't want to destroy it that quickly. We'll just leave that alone. So we have a lock. As you can see, we're in acquisition. Our course and our weapons are at the same. Th that's the uh, course your beam weapons are at. Uh, so we're going to fire a missile, and it missed. Now, there are several different ways you can shoot. You could focus a normal beam, which is just a normal beam. It doesn't focus on a thing. 
a wide beam if you're moving around a lot or your target is moving around a lot and you want to hit them at all. Or you can pinpoint different systems. Like for this case, I'm going to pinpoint weapons. And I'm going to turn on auto, auto fire. BW enabled. See? So, once uh, the weapon systems have acquisition, which is tough because it's a maneuverable little fella. Uh, we're a little too close, actually. Woo! There we go. It's just going to fire when it reaches the certain energy setting I have. So it's just going to keep doing that. Now that I have acquisition... Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Nope. It missed. Haven't done much damage. That's fine. Ooh, boy. Now, a cool thing is you can see my number one shield is a bit low. So if I want to move around and maybe focus and move around so my number two shield is facing that ship, you could do that here with the targeting shield facing buttons. So I'm going to change this to shield two. So now the ship will rotate so shield two is facing the enemy ship. That'll give shield one a time to recharge. Uh, now as you can see the weapon, their weapon systems are gaining damage. Uh, which is great. And my shield three is doing fine. Uh, let's see if I can get a... Uh, it's tough to get a missile lock. Now it's interesting. I set the, the distance for 50,000 kilometers down here. But it's around 17,000. So he's really trying to stay on my behind. Okay. So what's my other guy doing? Another thing I can do is I can tell my cat, my uh, wingman here to target a certain system on this ship. So while I'm firing at the weapons, I'm going to have him... Hang on. I'm going to have him target shields. So let's see. Pick up. Concentrate fire on system right there. And then concentrate fire on no, no, his drive. Incoming message received. So hang on, let's see what he says. You should have him targeted. Let's take a look here. Hello. Oh, you're not currently engaged. How do I engage you then? Oh, I see. Hang on a second. I didn't tell him to attack a target. Oh, his weapons are down. Okay. Uh, well, let's watch. Let's do this anyway. <laughs> That's awesome. Commit. So, first we gotta tell him. First, we have to tell the Dungara to. I believe disable. Let's see. Dis uh, no, not capture. We don't wanna capture. Capture cargo from ship. Disable enemy ship. Alright. And now. We'll probably see his weapons. So we're going to target his drive. Okay, good. Oh, already making damage. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Now I do like how the game does kind of pause a second while you're selecting the different panels. That's very handy. I didn't get a message saying you were attacking this guy, dude. Oh, okay, good. All right, awesome. Okay, his drive is down. Now, let's do something fun. His drive is down, and his weapons are down. Let's take out his shields next. Uh, hey, dude, target. Hey, dude, uh, Ankara, target his shields. Let's see, concentrate, fire on system. And now we're going to target... Oh, yeah. What's he targeting? Power, I think. New. Come in. Sure. Let's target that. So, you concentrate fire on the computer, and I will focus on the primary power. All right. Just going to weaken her up. Because I'm going to do a boarding action. Why not? It will be fun. You guys can see how it works. So let's see. 
Uh, we have to close. To board a ship, we have to close to, um, I think, 5,000 kilometers. So, yeah, that should do. So let's, uh, let's keep hitting her. Okay, so we're in range. We are in range. That is excellent. Okay, the computer's going down. Primary power is almost there. Actually, yeah, let's border. And then I'm going to destroy her. It'll be, it'll be a good time. Uh, okay, good. The computer's down. The power is almost out. Come on, keep going, buddy. Keep going. Ooh, getting there. Let's fire a few. Let's fire more often. Yeah. yeah let's fire more often. Come on. Come on. Almost. Primary power is almost down. It's in the red. It's in the red. Come on, man. Come on. Oh, why is it taking so long? Okay, we are good. Now, board. Oh, duh. Okay, stupid. <laughs> Forgot about that. The shields have to be down. So let's target the shields. And, dude, you target the shields, Mr. Dongara. So we're all going to be targeting shields. Rock on. And then we're going to board her. <laughs> now, I created this mission to destroy her, but eh, that's, uh, that's taking a while for her shields to go down, huh? Let's, uh, let's see what this does. Ooh. Okay. That helped. Making progress. Oh, I'm wasting a lot of missiles on this ship. Almost. I think that ship might be too close. To okay, good. Shields are down. Let's board. Yeah, and this is the screen I was telling you guys about. <laughs> I have been killed. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's probably way too loud for y'all. But I was killed. <laughs> Boarding a transport. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, well. Good job, UDP, you bastards. Uh, yeah. So I think that means game over, actually. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm dead. Yeah, that means game over. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Okay, well, now you saw. Wow, I didn't even expect that, and I made the mission. <laughs> oh, God. Pardon me. All right. Let's delete that. And he's not really dead, I don't think. No, because it reverted to the last... There wasn't a save. So now we're going to actually play a real... Like, this is one of the campaigns that came with the game. I tried to find other campaigns, but it's been so long that I'm not surprised I didn't find any. So... First tour of duty. And let's do this. <laughs> okay. So now I'm probably going to get... Yeah, you can even put in a little animation like that, which I think is kind of cool. Hosea Battles. What a name. Um, large Force and... Hyperspace Booster is a thing that... Um, Helped human humanity find uh, faster-than-light travel uh, hundreds of years ago. 
But apparently, according to the universe, um, a lot of the colonies in the local group, which is where this takes place, lost contact with Earth for many years. And uh, over that decade, there was a panic, and in the ashes of that panic, two governments emerged. The Federated Worlds, which is who we are, and the United Democratic Planets, who is our enemy. So now that you have that, let's see. Protect the booster, find out who the unknown enemy is, stop the alien UDB fleets. Okay. So. <sighs> yeah, it does this. I don't know if I could skip it. There we go. Unknown enemy. Oh no. Oh man. Okay. Thank you, God. Okay, so one ship has to get to the waypoint. Ah, fun times. I guess the rest of us, however many of us there are, have to give them cover. So, let's see. Waypoint. How many ships can we deploy? 2,200. So, the Kyoto Maru. Oh, we don't want to transport. If there's a scout, that'd be perfect. Uh, no, we don't want to transport. Let's see. There we go. Our ships. Now we want to. Oh. Uh, that's a dreadnought, and that'll bring some fire to bear, but let's see what else we have available. That's fine. The manual includes all of the information on these ships. What class they are. Huh, <laughs> Bellerophon. That's a f Firefly. Maybe they got it from this. Come on. Okay, a scout. So we definitely want a scout in there. So we're going to add the Bellerophon. Okay. Now let's see what we have. We have the Bond. That's a cruiser. Okay, so how much do we have left? Okay, we could probably do a cruiser and a dreadnought. So I like this name. Let's add. And then we're going to add a cruiser. Okay, that doesn't leave us much left. So now, we need to assign captains. I'm going to take the Dreadnought. Why not? I'm the fleet commander. It's my prerogative. As uh, that guy said, Whitney Houston's husband, uh, it's my prerogative. So I'm taking the Kung San with an exclamation point. Now I liked I liked Akiri, so I'm gonna stick with him. Now let's see. Let's look at Anna here. I had someone with sharp strongly ingrained hatred for the UDP. Fleet commander should note short tempered, not much a tactician. Okay, we won't be using her. How about Arnell here? Huh. Strong religious streak. Check that out. Okay, sorry. Um, I'm probably taking too long here. Let's check out Ambrose here. Uh, Umbrush. Oh, excuse me. Oh, we already looked at him. Okay, he's the guy that was shown war fatigue. Uh, Christoph. Let's look at Christoph. I like that name. Our mission calls for bravery and quick action. Decor is your man. 
Skill intact. Leave him at the officer's club. Draw on SARS and Quarka Cola. Wow. Under investigation. Pathological lying. Yeah, this is too important, man. Uh, what else do we got? Daniil. Okay, I'm going to look at a couple more of these. Before I pick my guy or girl. Ah. Achieve minor miracles. Sold. A sign. Okay. So, just to check, we have three ships assigned the Kung San, the Axia, and the Bellerophon. Let's make sure they all have captains. That's me, the Axia, and the Bellerophon. Okay. Let's zoom in a little bit to see where the hell we're what we're doing here. Okay, so that's where the enemy is gonna come in. That's a waypoint, XO2 right there. And that's where we start. Okay. All right, I'm going to have the cruiser protect the scout while I take care of, uh, hopefully, everything else. Here we go. Sounds a little crazy for a first mission. I'm ready to deploy the fleet. Here we go. First, yeah, I know. Hang on a second. Two. Two. Still learning the communicate the uh, button commands. Okay, so select. Gonna select the Axia. Uh, we're gonna select the Axia. Now let's see. Form battle group. No, wait a minute. Hang on. Shadow. Oh, Shadow FW ship. I'm going to have him shadow the Bellerophon. Oh, should have clicked that. Now we're going to select. Well, hang on. we got to find out which waypoint I'm supposed to send them to. Uh, where are the objectives? Data objectives. Oh shit. Okay, um dude. Select the Bellerophon. I've already used a minute. Oh god. Uh or is that three hours? Okay. Oh, sorry about that. Uh proceed to waypoint X two. Hello? Okay, good. Now We're going to keep an eye on the fleet right there. And everything else is going to be gravy. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Shields up. Auto target enabled. Hang on. I got to find out what's what here. Uh, tactical sensors. No, nav sensors. Der, nav sensors. I have to see what we're dealing with. Okay, we have a cruiser. Heavy cruiser. Heavy cruiser. Oh my god. Heavy cruiser. All right, I'm heading for the I'm heading for the first heavy cruiser. Lock the Deshona. That's target A. Target B. 
Auto target off. Will be the other heavy cruiser. And target C will be the last heavy cruiser. So we're going to head for the first cruiser first. Heading right in. Take him out. Let's do this. Wait, which one's closer? Which one's closer? Okay, we're going to head for the closer one. Let's do this. Now, the nice thing about this game is it's got time acceleration. So I'm going to accelerate a few things here well, before I do. See, like I said earlier, sorry about that. Pause. All that goes away, which is cool because I shouldn't be able to see that. So hang on. Let's take a look at the map. Tactical map. Oh, shit. What's hitting me? Oh, God. Shit. Auto EBW enabled. Hit their weapons. Hit their weapons. Face shield 2. Okay, I hope that was me. Oh god. Okay. Shit. Shit. Hang on. Reinforce the shields. Okay, I'm not doing so well, guys. <laughs> Drive system damaged. Okay. Crap. Drive system destroyed. Oh god, my drive was destroyed. <sighs> Come on, take out their weapons. Take out their weapons. I don't have any weapons left. Really? Okay, here we go. Move around. Come on, take out the weapons. Take out the weapons. Oh, that was tough, man. Ooh, I died. Okay, horrible music. Oh, God. Oh, I got the purple heart. That's dandy. Wow. Okay, that's... Fleet Commander is perished. I didn't save anything, so I got to start from the beginning. I also don't know how long I've been recording this. So I'm going to stop here. We're going to try again next time. But I wanted to show you a couple of things before we go. Wow, that was tough. So I was telling you about the shipyard. Uh, I was mentioning you could look up details on all the ships in the manual. Well, you can do that in the game as well, which I think is pretty cool. So, as you can see, Let's load a ship. Let's load the one we were just commanding. Let's take a look at it. That's a dreadnought. And these are the systems. Uh, command and control system, drive system, emergency power. Now, I love, one little thing I love, I'm just going to be honest, the little logos for each little company. Look at that. Look at, look at just the detail in, in that. Just, just the amount of detail and thought and care that went into making that. That's that that just blows my mind. That that just that just blows my mind. And you could and you could change these. You could you can change them. You could put on different uh, primary power systems if you want, which uh, does change. See, I don't know if you can read it down there. It's kind of hard to read, but it changes the total of the resource points that that ship uses. So I just love that. It's just all this detail. I love that too. Going to abort. Oh, no, we're going to exit. We're not going to save. No, we don't want to save the changes. <laughs> I just gave it an inferior power system. Why would I want to do that? And we could also look at, at intelligence for aliens, which is 
pretty nifty. I just wanted to give you guys a, a uh, uh, some detail as to, you know. So let's take a look. Let's load an alien. Okay, so I don't know if the UTP are going to, yeah, the UTP, the, those are our primary enemy. Okay. And yeah, Splinter Government, local group, bitter U FDWP war, recent FWAF, I love saying that, FWAF, successes, that sort of thing. And if you want, you could actually create in here, see where it says new, a new alien race to fight against. It just boggles my mind that this game gives you that much control. I mean, what game does that anymore, really? Um, and up here is, this is the editor, where you edit the uh, missions... And you edit the um, you edit the missions and you edit the campaigns, and here we can edit commanders and add them just like we could with aliens. I hope this isn't going all over the place. I wanted to show you some gameplay before I just showed you some of this cool stuff before I went. So you know, we can't load me, but let's load um, who's that chick we didn't like? Cynthia Gibbs. I don't think we liked her. Look at that 1993 photo. Crazy. Yeah, look at that. Overtype, insert, you can edit all this. And you can also see their psych profile, which is pretty awesome. I think this is a scale of 1 to 100. I hope so. She's pretty loyal, but not that brave. And doesn't have a lot of stamina. And look, belief system. Allegiance to the UDP. She admires honesty the least. I mean, that's... Look at all that detail. And you, I could create someone in here. It just blows my mind that I could do that. I haven't even dived into any of that yet. So that is my first Let's Play video for Rules of Engagement 2 by Omnitrend. Uh, join us next time where we try that same mission again with a different tactic in which maybe we send just the scout by itself off at top speed to that waypoint while a cruiser and a dreadnought take on the rest of the ships. Thank you for watching. And like last time with the Endless Space one, I invite any criticism, critique, suggestions, uh, because again, I'm new to this, and I want to make this as awesome as I can for everyone, especially you guys. So again, thank you for watching and listening. I hope you had a good time. I know I did. And have a wonderful day.